Welcome back to another review and today I'm going to take a look at Screencast-O-Matic. It's a fantastic all-around tool for teaching and recording and doing all kinds of things in one sweet, simple package. If you're wondering why there's a green screen behind me, I want to show you. So let's switch to the desktop so I can show you Screencast-O-Matic. So if you go on screencastomatic.com, there's a link in the description as always with all the information and you can check it all out. It has a lot of help. There's a very extensive showcase of what it can do. And I can go in here and look at tutorials and there are a ton of them. And it has a lot of options here in terms of this here where you can learn everything about it. So you can upload, you can video edit, you can have your scripted recordings, you can have subtitles, all kinds of things and this will be all explained here. They have a blog where they keep things updated and you have product explanations here. Then you have the pricing. So this could be a yearly fee or monthly, whatever you prefer. This is also open for developers for work, but I'm going to focus on education. So again, link in the description with all of the information there. So as you open it up, you have this here. You're greeted with the screen and then you have options for auto backup where you want to set your recordings for your scripted content, files you want to import and so on and so on. Keeping this in a educational realm, for me when I do my animation critiques, I can hit record and it launches the browser, which then you can reposition. You can also change the size if you want. So it's completely up to you. You can change the size in here. So I can say 720p. All of my critiques are 720p to save space, but you can also say 180 or you can make it custom. So since I am here and I want to show this within the screen here, I'm going to bring it to that. You can change the maximum time just in case you want to. You can select your microphone. So I have actually not this one right now because I'm using my shotgun mic for my camera, which is up here. But that is not the one that I'm using for the critiques. For the critiques, it's this. That's why if you listen to the sound quality, it's a bit different. That is the mic that I'm using on my swivel arm. Let's bring it back. Then you have your computer audio. You want, to, you want this on in case you want to listen and record of what's playing. And you have preferences. It's a bit small here to see, but you can change your hotkeys. Important is the countdown. I usually have it off, but let's keep it on so you can see what it is. And I have the control bar at the top. So if you see this, the control bar is all of this up here. It's being a bit lower. So you have, again, your preferences that you can start here. Uh, this is to draw, I'll show you later, but that is at the top, usually because I have a scroll bar at the bottom for my movie, for the critiques. So I want this at the top. You have the preview, full screen recording controls and so on. But you also have zoom on double click, which I usually have off when we keep this on for now, just to show you what it is. All right, then you have the screen option, right? Which records what you have on the screen. You can also go bam, straight into a webcam. And this is what happens. So you have here, green screen, or you can do both. So I have this, and sometimes for critiques for animation mentor, as they want to see someone recording here, I have this in here. And then depending on that, you're gonna have to change the light a little bit to give your green screen a bit more light. So if I go and do this, there's potentially a bit more even light. So what can I do here? So if I bring up a movie, you have this here. I'm gonna talk about this movie later, about what kind of player I'm using. But for now, you can do this. And you can change the position of where this window falls if you want to. You have options here to make this all big, to see my face, or smaller, different pinning options. And this is the green screen options, which it does on the fly. So it seems pretty okay. You can change the color, of course. You can change the tolerance. So you can see what's going to... Ah! <laughs> ah! The invisible man attacking. So you can do this. You can kind of adjust depending on the quality that you want. And it's also on the, the lighting behind it. So you can see a little bit of green as you do the motion blurry thing. Oh, it's so warm in here. And you can flip the footage as well. So you can do this. It's not going to show the green screen here as you record, but it's going to be when you're done. So let's say I'm going to record this and this is the countdown, right? So you can get ready and now it records, blah, 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 blah. And I can go through my shot and I can blah, 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 blah do this. In case you don't have a program that lets you annotate things, you can click here and it gives you the tools. So now you can say freehand. So this is chosen to be green. You can change the color 
and I can do all kinds of things. So this was on the fly here. Let me go back to green. This is my green scribble. Now, if you're confused about what's what, I'm gonna erase this and you can still see, and I'm gonna get out of the tool, which you can either hit this, or when you have this, for me it's escape and it gets out. And this is actually the drawing of this tool. So I'm gonna turn this off, go back into drawing mode so you can see green is what I have here. You can change this into lines if you want clean lines. You can change this into arrows if I wanna point at all kinds of things. At any point, escape takes this out or you can just erase what you have. So hit erase and it's gone. You have boxes, you have ovals, so many options. You have a highlight option for that. You have also a speech bubble. It's a bit weird to draw, but you can have hi, I'm gonna say something here. And then you can switch to text and gives you a text area. And then in here you can type and you can change your options here in terms of the color, in terms of the size, and so on and so on. Capture, cursor while drawing, this, these are all the extra options. Okay, again, you can erase, I'm gonna go back to freehand. So here's the caveat when you draw. So if I play this, I'm gonna turn the sound off just in case, and you go into drawing mode, bam, it's gonna freeze the footage. The footage is technically still playing in the background. So if I start drawing and say, you know, blah, 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 critiques the line, whatever you're gonna do and blah, 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 I can erase this and this is still on that frozen image. If I get out of it by either clicking this or escape, bam, it goes back to where we were. So what you don't have is a frame by frame option to draw since it's screen capturing what you have on your desktop at this moment. And that is why I use this tool, Keyframe Pro, to do critiques because I can critique on a frame by frame basis and you can see how it's there. So that's why I'm using this combination, but more about Keyframe Pro later. So once you're done with this, I can say, I like this, I'm done. And you can pause this and resume if you want to. Again, there's a countdown, but it gets annoying because sometimes you want to quickly do something else. So that's why I turn the content off. You can go back at any point to check how things are, and then you can go back to the front and keep recording. You can delete the whole thing, start over and say no, or you can be done with it. And here's the cool thing. Once you're done, I'm gonna close my window here. This is what you recorded. So you can see these are all the shenanigans that I recorded. Then you can say upload, then you can upload this all kinds of places for my email and you have different everywhere, right? You can, you can have different options of where you want to upload this. This can be for YouTube, this can be Vimeo, whatever you have. Usually for me, this is a local file that I wanna publish. You hit record and then you can change the name, blah, blah, blah. You can have cursor, no cursor, highlighting the cursor, which folder and you have open captions and the quality for a file size. But if you go to edit, bah, 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 here is the webcam. So you can say on or off and you can unhide the webcam. So now you have what I recorded and you can change this. You can change the size, the position and it has the green screen taken out. And again, you got resize options, cropping options, different styles. You can change all kinds of things, layering and options and the opacity. And all of that can also be animated. But before I do this, you can change the camera. So this is the actual size that you're going to put out when you save it. And you can change the background color of your canvas. This is what I was talking about. So this is the microphone that is on the mic that I showed before. And you can have normalized options, reducing the noise. You can reduce how much you hear, as you can see, as the volume goes up and down. You can export just the sounds. This is the computer sound. So my pigeon clip here had sound. I can turn this on or off. And the same thing here, you have options, ducking and normalizing, reducing the volume and exporting this if you want. Now, as I'm doing all of this, you're gonna see my cursor. You can turn this on or off. For the cursor, you also have highlighting just for where it is, when you click or when you right click. Different colors and you can say yes or no, I have this usually off. Again, webcam on or off. And then you have additional options. So now you have speech to text. So I'm gonna say start. And now it's gonna look at what I recorded. Freddie and now record. <laughs> so these are the things that were picked up, but some of the things I wasn't saying right, I was rushing or it's something that I'm gonna edit out when I'm done recording, but it does all of this. Now it's calculating, but it's gonna populate 
the text to speech, which is super cool. And then you have this as a subtitle, absolutely fantastic. The caption text you can import or you can export this as an SBV file or as an SRT file. I'm gonna say cancel because you don't want this. Yes, absolutely, cancel. On top of that, you have other tools. So I can say, for instance, you can cut and then you have all the options for your cutting points. Copy options to hide, like I said, you can insert different things, a different recording, a new recording. You can narrate on top of things. You have overlay images, you can blur the image, add a shape, arrows, highlights, text, and so on. There's a huge amount of options available. You can change the speed. You have a ton of transitions that you can just put in and then you say what kind, how long, and then from when to when. Then you have what kind of transition levitate, radial, fractal, and so on. There are so many options, it's absolutely bananas. And you can edit this, it's like a, it's a whole editing package with so many options, you don't have to go into another tool. So I'm done with this, I'm gonna say fine, and then I can save out. Now, the caveat though is that if you use a green screen, is that the processing time to save out the clip is fairly long. There I say, I love the whole package, but when I do green screen and I save it out, it takes a long time. So actually for that, I do use OBS. Again, link in the description with another tool if you want to. It's much more complex, much more complicated. Some things are better, some things are not as good, not as flexible as this. But if you record a green screen, it does it on the fly. So with OBS, I can designate my webcam or whatever in the green screen. And when you're done and you're done recording and you save it out, that green screen element already keyed, put into your shot and it's all ready. So you don't have to wait. So that's my only caveat. The green screen exporting takes a while. But one thing I wanted to show you is that when you do record and you play all this and I was going into the drawing mode, I had draw and zoom on. So double tap and you're gonna zoom. If you tap on the eye, that's where it's going to go. So your double tapping is going to determine where it zooms in. Of course, you can erase this if you want. You can still draw on here. Right click, erase the drawing. Right click to zoom out if you want and right click to exit. But these are the options and you have that in here, draw and zoom, and it gives you all those options here. And of course, as I said before, you can also not have that. So when I pause this and I say, okay, I'm done. Gives me all those options. I wanna save this, sure, recording, whatever. Continue in the background and it's going to record this in the background. I can go back in there and re-record something new and like I said in here, double click on zoom. No, I'm not a fan because every now and then I'll double click on this and then it's going to zoom in and it's a bit of a pain. I don't always want this, but at least there is an option if you so desire. So as you put the recording into the background, you can start another recording and you can schedule out your recordings. It's very, very flexible. Speaking of flexible, that's going to be another review about the screen screen, also very flexible and also awesome, but that's a review for another time. And I got all the like coming in here. But anyway, Screencast-O-Matic. So if you are now in a place where you need to record at home and you want your whole desktop or specific window, you don't have access to Premiere or other things to edit things, the program gives you a ton of options to tweak, import, change things. Again, like I said, green screen, lots of options. I'm a massive fan of it. Link in the description for all the information of the tool. They're also active on Twitter. So if you have any questions there, they're posting all kinds of things. I think you should be covered in terms of help and support. Any comments about this? Comments are open as always, let me know. If you've used this before, if you have any special tricks that you like, any specific things that you don't like that you would like to see improved, who knows? But comments are open and let me know. And if you feel like this was helpful, of course, I would love a subscribe. Hit the subscribe button and that bell button to get all the vacations for all my uploads, which are pretty much almost daily, except weekends. That's it. If you're still watching, as always, thank you for your patience and I will see you in my next upload.